Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Back to the Podcast with your hosts, Justin Neal and Chris Lawler. And our mission is to create an entertaining, cinema-centric discussion about the past, present, and future of all things revolving around entertainment. Please don't forget to follow, like, and subscribe on wherever you consume your content. On today's show, we're going to just have a little fun taking a stroll down memory lane with some fun movie theater stories. Justin, it's been a week. How you been, man? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Uh, oh, I want to say thank you to... you. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, right. Say thank you to everyone out there who's listening, yeah. and also anyone, any breeders out there who have, you know, <laughs> fulfilled their fulfilled their <laughs> procreative obligation. Right. Cheers to you too. So that's what I that's what I say to that. Um, but no, I'm happy to be here. I love it. This is one of my favorite parts of the week is to sit here with you and talk shop because this is what I love to do. So, what have you been watching? I want to know what you've been up to this week. Uh, introduced the wife to Happy Gilmore uh, this past week. Uh, uh. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it was just a thing. It popped up <laughs> on one of the streaming things. I hadn't seen it in a long time. We were cooking <laughs> dinner, so it was something to throw on in the background. Mm -hmm. She wasn't. I was cooking that night, so she was sitting on the couch, and I was like, "Just have a laugh. It's it's dumb." <laughs> You know, no, very pop popular up, though. Like, very you know, popular. Yeah, very, and it still holds up. It's still goofy when it wants to be goofy. She was still kind of giggling when Adam's like just yelling at the golf ball, you know, like because at the time that silly. was the that was the shtick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that was the thing. And I would say, oh, sorry. What? No, no, no. It's all it's all good. What were you gonna say? I mean, it, I was gonna it, say it, that like probably it falls into that category of it might actually have aged really well because if you liked it at that time you would probably still like it for the same reasons yeah. now you know what i mean like it's almost irrespective of yeah. time yeah. um it, it's un untethered by its you know dumbness or whatever but not necessarily in a bad way but that doesn't have to be a bad thing yeah. <laughs> if anything it could be like a strength <laughs> so yeah. it ages well for exactly. but anyway if you like it no that wasn't the adam sandler i respect it and it's super popular it's kind of like jim carrey at that time it's just not my brand of humor but <laughs> it is obviously very popular so like cheers yeah. you know what i mean i mean sometimes it's, well the fun thing was is that we just got done watching like uh modern family we got introduced to that late uh, and we binged the hell out of that show and thought it was okay really funny. and julie bowen's the star of that i had no idea julie bowen was the uh, female lead in happy gilmore so that okay. was also like a fun like you know new discovery throwback <laughs> no idea julie bowen was the female lead in happy gilmore and it just made it even more entertaining to re-watch it knowing her style and stuff like that so anyway mm -hmm. yeah but then i watched that uh john wick four and i did not like it did you I rent care. it you watched it at home or is it in the theater bought the digital copy oh you bought oh you thought it was yeah. you thought it I would was, be I solid enough assumed, to buy yeah i just assumed since i love the first three and i did not like four. Oh, was, bummer thoroughly disappointed i was talking about it the whole night after we got done watching it and then the whole next day i was like i just i can't believe how bad it was like <laughs> i just i was shocked and stuff like that and i was like the amount of comments that i was making on like the action and how like hokey some of the camera shots and stuff like that were i was like i didn't do that in the first three movies so it obviously st a lot of things were standing out that were just like fuck is going on and there was some mm. cuts in there where it was like well i guess that scene's over and then that, that whole uh, thing's done and now we're just mm -hmm. here and they never went back and i i was just like there is some blatantly bad stuff and it was what three hour movie three hour plus movie or something <laughs> it was like stupid long and didn't they're all be, three hours you know they're i know we're not like a review hours. channel but I was disappointed. I don't like being disappointed. I always want to. Well, the run's got to end. Some, yeah. yeah. Did you see anything cool this week? Please. Well, I would me. say like the run's got to end sometime. You know what I mean? Like even getting right. to number four without a misfire. Yeah. I mean, that sounds pessimistic. Hey, that's a glass half full. Like, I can, yeah, <laughs> it's the half full. Like, it's, it's great that they made it to four, the fourth know, one before right. they like drop the ball. Like, that's yeah. that's an achievement. Everyone is. <laughs> I mean, they're up everyone the gets a medal at St. Barnabas's. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, did you see anything cool? Please tell me you got something. So I started watching the prehistoric. Oh, the prehistoric. His, prehistoric thing yeah, prehistoric I, planet yeah. on Apple TV, which mentioned 
uh, narrated by Attenborough, who they actually show yeah. this time. I noticed at the beginning, it was like, oh, look, it's Attenborough. Because normally, yeah. it's, you just have his voice on all the, oh, no, the yeah, other he, documentaries that he does. Yeah, so yeah, actually, yeah. he does kind of an intro, and then yeah. they go into it. Um, but I thought that was interesting. Um, so at first, I got to tell you, I was a little unimpressed because mm -hmm. you had raved about it. You know what I mean? And you're a man who I know you have a fine eye, a connoisseur's eye for effects at this point. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so you, that was one thing that you specifically talked about was how photorealistic it was. Yeah. And I was sitting there going like, well, it looks good, but I mean, shit, it doesn't look that good. And, and which I was even surprised. I noted in myself, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so it was like, well, why do I feel that way? It was like, it just feels like a little flatter than and like the close ups look pretty good. But in general, this actually just, I don't know, it looks kind of cheesy. Like I didn't expect it to look this cheesy. And that's when I was like, there's a red flag here. Something is wrong. Like my movie Spidey sense started like tingling and I was like what's the what? problem there's a red flag and so I start thinking about like because I'm a problem solver like I'm an editor and half of what I do is fucking problem solving technology so it was like something is wrong like they're they're not showing this right like I'm looking at the wrong thing I just knew I was looking at the wrong thing and so I thought what would be the problem because the TV I know is set up right and I was just going through the list and I realized, OK, I'm actually sourcing this from my computer and that HDMI is going into a different input that I'm used to using. Uh -huh. So I brought up the settings and because that is a disused HDMI port. HDMI port, it automatically came with all those like shitty settings turned on, mm. motion, smoothing, all that stuff. And stuff. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I didn't use it, I hadn't oh. turned it all off. That's so totally as soon as I turned it off, yeah. it was like, Oh, now you okay. see it. Good. I was like, now it lost. looks gorgeous. Look yes, oh, I was like, this looks like a bad. T you know what I mean? Like it does. It looks like all of those things. You know, it would look like no, with all of that like crap turned on. Series, right? Like, and it was. It like, looked oh, cheese. Really it looked nice. cheesy. You know, it looked yeah. like you know not poorly done. I was like, this is a good animatic. You know, what I'm mean? like for some <laughs> people, you know, for some instances, this is like no, really, really no. good. Yeah. But yeah. from what I was expecting, given the pedigree. And from what you had said, I was like, I was expecting this to look a lot better. It does. It looks gorgeous. So end result, yeah. it looks it is it's gorgeous. Awesome. I'm really impressed. I am. They love it. Um, yeah. They'll watch about one at a time because they. It's still a documentary. You know what I mean? So like, there's the wow. But like sitting and watching the like habits of animals that a don't exist anymore. You know what I mean? Like some people don't even like those documentaries in real life uh -huh. so even dinosaurs aren't necessarily going to just, make them like the format I but i did it. i did like yeah. it a lot i did yeah. like it cool. it's cool it went from like oceans all this stuff so that was cool and also i finally watched the trailer for into the spider verse because right. someone else said have you it was for the second one so the second one's in the theater now yeah. am i correct yeah, right. okay I so someone saw the second one and said yeah. it's even better than the first one and That's when i said i hadn't weird. seen Someone yeah. said, like, hey, have you taken um, the your boys to go see the new Spider-Verse? And I was like, I was thinking to myself, no, and I haven't even <laughs> seen the first one yet or even a trailer for it. And Lawler is on my case. You're not, but you know what I mean? Like, he's mentioned yeah. it more than once. So to me, it's like, I, I got to do it. Like, hey, man, so yeah. I, yeah, yeah. So I watched the trailer with actually my oldest and my wife. And so Miles Morales, it comes up. So that was cool that even I was like, oh, hey, it's Miles. And my son uh, noticed that. But, of course, instantly it was like, oh, hi, different animation. I, of course, instantly mm -hmm. saw like, oh, this is something new. It's and by the end of the trailer, I was like, that was cool. I totally want to watch that and watch it as like a piece of art or something. And I yeah. look over my my wife really lit up and she said, like, I, I will totally watch that. So they're doing something right because she lit up like a Christmas tree. You. She totally wants to see it. So Find a way to we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it soon. Get it on Amazon Prime, whatever, however you yeah, get yeah, yeah. movies and stuff like that. But enjoy the first one and definitely head out and see the second one. I've been talking to the wife. I mean, we don't have kids, but I've been talking to her and I was like, maybe we should step out to the movie theater. We don't really get out much. We didn't been to, to a, the theater. a movie theater in a while. Which you need to fill your cup, man. You need to fill what? your cup. It's our temple. You got to fill. It's like you got to fill your cup, like seeing some old friends my, in Atlanta recently. It filled the cup, you know, next to for so many years was so bad. We've gotten so accustomed to just watching things at home. 
Um, th and then we moved around. It's a long story. I don't need to get into it. Our movie theater situation hasn't been stable. How about that? <laughs> and it hasn't been sure. quality in so long. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we, we just haven't stepped out. So we've just gotten accustomed to just waiting for things to come out later, um, especially with all the streaming platforms and stuff like that. It's bound to just show up on one of those things. Is yeah. The, the lazy answer. But uh, I think it's amazing. I think you need to definitely check it out. Okay. I, I mean, should. I, I'm Sorry. the same way, right? When they started announcing it, I didn't think much of it. Um, the cool thing about the first one is they didn't really do like a huge like announcement thing. It just kind of came out one day. That's it, like how yeah. I And there wasn't yes. like a lot around it until there was. Like, I don't remember a big announcement. It was just there. Or even the second yeah. one too. And really then I didn't think of much of it like you. And I waited till streaming. And one day it was one on one of the platforms. So I threw it on and was like hooked. And I couldn't believe how beautiful the animation was. Yeah, the, the animation looks style, the humor. Oh, the humor is so good. I mean, the fact that they got Nick Cage to do that. John Mulaney is in, in there as well, uh, hmm. playing different types of Spider-Men. Maybe I, I shouldn't tell you much since you don't yeah, know. Yeah, shut up. Shut Spoiler up. alert. <laughs> Uh, asshole <laughs> you know, like i said the kids will enjoy it because it's another spider-man movie it's fun sure and, yeah 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 no it's fine it's it, fine yeah, mm -hmm. on an animation level it is amazing yeah That's it looks the rad mnt thing looks the way it does the new oh. trailer for that that because now this is a new art style and it's, yeah and you're that's cool replicated this is the originator a, re and a renaissance so well It'd be that'd be cool to have like an animation renaissance because I know it's very close to your heart. But I yeah. I, I appreciate animation in the same way I appreciate other forms of art very much. Yeah. So and I have a lot of respect for it, but it's not it's not part of my soul. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um. Was, and yeah. so, yeah. but it's something that I I I can learn and appreciate and blah blah blah. I think it's interesting. And so to see when I saw the trailer, one of the things I thought was, okay, we're entering something new. Like, yeah. Um. It, because even some of the shots I saw in the trailer, I thought, you can't do that with a camera, not like this. No. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are certain things I'm like, we can, uh, and I know what can be done. You know what I mean? Like, either through my own, like I've studied, like, this is what I do. I know what can be done. And you can do a lot with, Mar you know what I mean? Like, with digital yeah. stuff, blah, blah, blah. You can do a lot. Don't get me wrong. But it, there was something else I saw it's in that trailer funny. that I was like, you yeah. can't. I wouldn't even know how I mean, to go about don't love doing animation this. more. I mean, dude, Iron Giant is one of like the greatest movies of all time, right? Uh oh. I grew up uh, like Bird. A Brad Bird did that, didn't he? Right, Wasn't that right, Brad yeah. Bird's movie yeah. before Pretty he went sure, to Pixar? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he was already like doing the Simpsons, but that was like one of his bigger like step forward. his early thing that they yeah, said, yeah. here, you do this. And it turned out to be so much better than oh, like what than anticipated, right? I, I, I actually know, haven't seen it. Like I know that this is probably gonna get us a lot of flag. I'm not into Japanese anime. Okay. I'm into like other forms of animation. Not that I don't have respect for what they do over there. It's just there's just too much. There's too practice. much content. You either go down a wormhole or you don't. I know I, that I, definitely is it for sure. But uh, yeah, and I don't know. You grow up a Disney kid, you know, you love it. Yeah, I yeah. Grew up, Saturday morning cartoons are in my blood, man. When Cartoon sure. Network came out, we were still pretty young, you know, so that was around. Like, I don't know. Animation is no, always it. fun. That's why I like. I mean, you know, I, I do voice acting. I know uh -huh. you do editing, but I'm also a voice actor on the side. So I love animation to see characters come to life that way. Too. That makes sense. And through uh, voice, because so much of it is the voice craft. Sure, I get that. Yeah. Oh, and here's the, the thing. Oh, working sorry. with an animator to like match that up, you know, and stuff. And sometimes animators are the actors. They're the ones trying to like create that thing. And then they're just trying to match a voice to it. Like there's so many different routes that they go. But it's yeah. such a cool, fun, creative process and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, totally. But, yeah. I love animation. Sure. We should definitely even do, like animation episode talk okay. about like, the top ones and you know Pixar and stuff obviously blew my mind with Toy Story way back in the day like oh yeah blew everyone's and then, mind you know what they built out of that that whole empire so yeah awesome. it is an empire so yeah. one of the things I was thinking you need to okay so uh, we need to do uh, some resolutions so I'm gonna give you I'm gonna give you your resolution and okay. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you my own so yours is gonna be like you have to treat going to the theater like a job if you're out of practice okay. 
It's true. And so like during the pandemic, like I totally got out of practice with going to the theater right. and just watching it at home. And it wasn't the first one I saw was Dune, which was so great because it was oh, such I a fucking great movie to see in yeah. the theater because it is such a theater experience. It was one of those that was like, this is why I go to the theater sort of, you know, experience for me, which really reign helped reignite that flame that burns within me. So now <laughs> yeah. I've just made it. I'm, I, I kind of started making it be a thing like, no, I need to make myself go see something occasionally, even if it's like once a month, go see something in the theater. I need to make myself. Yeah. And now that I've started making myself, I'm, I find myself wanting to go more and more and more. Right. And I do have a good spot. Like there's a couple theaters around here. And so I can always find, you know, what I'm looking for, that sort of thing. Well, there's art house stuff, whatever. So yeah. anyway, I should say that you need to set a I'm resolution, especially because yeah. you don't have kids, man. No, I, <laughs> no, I get it. No excuses. We, we live, we now live in a city. So before I lived in a mountain town that literally had one movie theater and the sound quality was the so bad. The reason we stopped going out was because of Superman. We went to go see Superman at the movie theater. I was very excited about the new Henry Cavill one that they were putting together. Right. Um, and uh, we sat down and there was a couple on the left side that was talking and they were they were actually whispering, but I could hear every fucking word they were saying. And it's in the middle of the scene where they're destroying Metropolis. And that's what told me how bad the speakers were. That they just oh, that the they were so being bad. overpowered by the whispers of whispers. locals. <laughs> yeah, that's the sad. So old. They didn't even like have like a digital sound system or projector. Until I was about to say it's bad when this when the like your screen your phone screen is brighter than the screen that's yeah. in the movie's being projected just, on. Just, we were tired of paying the twenty plus dollars to go to a movie theater. Sure, was, totally get it. Theater that we had set up, and that's where that came from. And so for years. We just have stopped going to the theater because don't get me wrong. Like I'm, you know, a huge. Well, Marvel everyone fan. stopped going. That's why there's a big well, no, no, promo no, no, no. promotional thing. Like Superman was years ago, though. That's I know. But I mean, like even half the ads now, like that come mm -hmm. on before a movie are like <laughs> shown only in theaters or whatever. It's like, mm -hmm. please. They basically come. They're like it's Al Pacino is here to say, like, please come to the theater and bring your friend sort of thing. So thing is which is like, but so I agree so with it. Like I'm with them, though. I'm like, yes, we should go to the the theater so but you know some movies are still hitting big tight uh big numbers you know right now the uh so, mario mario you know, just like, became great, great yeah point. huge right. huge movie huge still huge that one. Yeah. that one was huge i don't even remember what that one hit worldwide but that one was insanely high. okay so that's your resolution is you just need to like get the fire even if it's not a lot it doesn't have to be a lot it's like once a month just start with once a month but make yourself I'm go see something in the theater I go see that, that in the theater. Go do it. IMAX. Do it the go way IMAX, fucking Nolan. And, and then that'll help it reignite. And you go, this yeah. is why I go to the theater. I'm because if anything is going to for, for the office tenant. Well, people were hoping tenant was going to do that. And then it just, I know. Didn't. Um, it just, it was like too, it. it was too cerebral. It's even too cerebral. It's not too cerebral for me, but it's one of those, like, it's just exhausting. It I makes me think of the beginning of the social network when she says dating you is like dating a stair master. That's how I feel about watching Tenet. I was like watching, oh my God, watching this movie is like, you know, watching a, you know, being on a stair master sort of yeah, thing. Uh, I just it's like, it takes too much. Dialogue. People bitched about the, the I audio mix a lot any dialogue and that was You're, the problem you don't like the mix I, yeah my sound setup so i spent mm -mm. We, we, it wasn't we it was mixed like that way times. and i was it like, was mixed I, that I way fucking hear you that. have he mixed it that way there were articles and articles about it at that time I, and, and so like up and went down that rabbit hole and saw all that oh and was, oh great he doesn't Great. want you. To, you're not supposed to pick up everything. That's part of the mystery, man. You don't need to know. Just go it's with it. Super annoying. It's super and annoying. but that's how ever. But unfortunately, that's how audiences felt. Like mm -hmm. I see his experiments, but unfortunately, you can't fuck with the audio. That's the thing. Yeah. It can look shitty. It can look shitty. But if you yeah. if it sounds shitty, people will get off the bus real quick. And even if it's on purpose, if it sounds bad or if they think it sounds bad, people check out real quick. Yeah. And, oh, so mine, my uh, resolution. That's yours. So Oppenheimer will be good. And then mine is going to be, I need to start watching more like just foreign films and multicultural films. Just instead of 
Okay. I need to start instead of rewatching the classics. You know what I mean? Because even yeah. something like this, our podcast, it, I want to go rewatch old things and rehash it, which is good. And I do like doing that. But for like each one, I need to add something and also just add something new that isn't in my usual wheelhouse. That's really the point. It's not yeah. about Pass out some it's, suggestions then. You know I what I mean? Love, I've got some great foreign suggestions. Have you just stuff like that? District B thirteen. Uh, it's French, right? French parkour. It was like produced by it's parkour. It's, yeah, yeah, parkour. I haven't seen it, but I know what you're talking about. Okay, that is a fun thrill ride. And even though, yes, but that's still in my wheelhouse. I need to go. Like, I'm not going to learn anything from that. Okay, I know about right. parkour. I like French cinema, so it needs to be like, you know, something from Nigeria. You know what I mean? Like, I need to or Thailand. Uzbekistan, whatever, but I need to have you just start absorbing more instead of movie, rehashing. About what? the Russian movie by Timur Bekmambetov, Night Watch and Day Watch. You ever seen uh, that? That's still, no, but that's still like nothing Russian. about that is going to be. Okay, now we're, <laughs> that's still in your wheelhouse? Probably. And you, but you, I saw 30 that. Days of Night. No, it's not like I know that it's well. different. I know yeah, it's not. No, way different. But those came out around the same time, and so it was kind of it, okay. it was viewed at that time yeah, as like they, the Russian they, import Nightwatch version. And Daywatch are great movies, and I've heard that. They've yeah, gotten good. Yeah. What about like horror Japanese horror movies? One of my one of my good friends, Ron, he loves Japanese horror movies, and he's one of those people. He wants to find like the most twisted like what's the most fucked up thing that someone can come up with and Found the it. japanese japanese horror seems to be well yeah so this is a shout out to ron but uh i don't know what you're about to say but my man ron loves that stuff oh my friend showed me because he's into that too and he loves showing me stuff so i'm not into yeah, this yeah. they do <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah so what's yours called i'm trying to think of the like famous japanese director that did this but it was a showtime episode they had these like horror segments that they did on showtime and this one got banned from being shown ever again and it was something about how like some twin had like a hand like her twin was like a hand or something growing out of her head and, Yikes. and stuff like that and, uh, it was basically a torture porn film with getting yeah. without getting too graphic it was not mm. fun to watch he made me sit through it it was about an hour ish long because it's just like a short film if you will it's a showtime it's a showtime movie yeah takashi miike. show late at night that guy? <laughs> i think that's the director's name takashi miike that that directs these kind of like horrible horrible fucking name rings a bell. that oh. ring that name rings a bell though yeah it should he's pretty famous um yeah, but yeah. yeah there, i gotta think of what this one was um I'll figure it out one time. And, but anyway, but it's okay. The, it, that's it does, my resolution. That's my horrible. resolution. <laughs> so anyway, you need to, that's something I'm just stating resolution. Like I need to start expanding my cinema knowledge beyond just, you know, what I've already gotten rehashing what I already got. It's time to, yeah. Anyway, so uh, Maybe we should start a whole board of shame behind ourselves. Start adding to and crossing. Off. I should start Kurosawa too. I should finally right. do that. So I can mark it off the board of shame. But you're right. Actually, you know what? It's a good idea. I'm going to start a board of shame of things that we can, over time, we can add to and check off. Yeah. So we can see progress. It's about progress. You're not going to get it all. And that's fine. But the fact that you're like doing, growing a little step at Mm -hmm. a time. So like this is about growth. So you need to go back to the theater, go to the temple, you know. And speaking of the temple, like what are some, I know you worked at a movie theater. What is... I did not, but I spent so much time. I might as well have. No, I ne- no. I worked at the rental store. I worked at more than one chain of rental store. Oh, okay. Um, in other, I mean, I but I didn't work stores. at an exhibition. But I was never an I was never an exhibitionist by trade. Okay. <laughs> so, like you were. So, did anything happen while you were an exhibitionist? Um, that's you know any fun stories or anything it, crazy? It was, you know, they say like. Job. It was amazing. It was uh, it was the biggest movie theater in the nation at the time. Uh, with 24 screens, two of which sat over like 1,300 people. Um, just what, two. What, what theater there. is this? What was what? it called? What was this place called? Cinemark Legacy down in oh, uh, okay. Texas and stuff like that. So it was a big Cinemark chain. Tinseltown was like the, the Cinemark Tinseltown was like the big one for a while. 
And this one they built across town and it was like right next to my house. I had just turned 16 or something like that. And uh, it was close enough that I used to just rollerblade to work and stuff all summer long. It was hot. I didn't have a license yet. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to watch movies for free. They were hiring like <laughs> crazy because they needed huge staff for a place that size, right? So they are like a third of who I went to high school with basically worked at that. Movie I, yeah. Yeah. I get it. Sure. Yeah. I get you. So it was kind of a fun place to work. And then yeah, you totally. know, a lot of my managers were just like 18, 19 year olds that had just, yeah, yeah. Like, they were in college, like in college yeah. and stuff. And then, um, they seem yeah. older. They seemed older at the time though. Right. <sighs> yeah. Right. They did. They really did. So yeah, yep. it was fun. I mean, there was a lot of like great like moments and wild stuff, but yeah, Definitely dealing with like spills, uh, you know, uh, like wild vomit spills, <laughs> if you will. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. Ew. And yeah, then the cleanup. Finding beer and stuff like that in the theater yeah. and like uh, empty bottles and uh, and whatnot. Thankfully, we had a lot of police uh, on, on site because the place was so big anyway. It needed security. For you had money. to have security. Yeah. yeah the, the money that was being handled in this little, place. little shitheads trying to sneak in. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. You know, uh, once again, I was probably, I probably would have been one of those. Actually, no, I was pretty good. I wouldn't have tried to sneak in. I, I, I think I hopped theaters a couple times. Like I would go oh, yeah. like finish, like finish, pay for one movie and then go see a second one. But I never really? like snuck into an R rated movie when I was underage because <laughs> there was no good way to get away with that. And I, I didn't like doing things I couldn't we always get away paid with. for our movies. It's, it I, I pretty much cheaper, did too. Way cheaper back then too. You know well, yeah, I mean? it was like three dollars or something. Yeah, you know, or dollar fifty at the dollar yeah. theater. Could even go to the dollar theater. We would go to the dollar the theater. Fifty cent Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, Seriously, totally. like that was that used to be how we, we survived for a while. Especially when I got older and I didn't have a lot of money, we would go yeah. to Fifty Cent Tuesdays and go to the CC's Pizza next door and do all you could eat buffet. And we would take like Ziploc baggies and like fill pizza in there so we could have food for later because we were so poor at the time. Oh man, memories, dude. But yeah, just to go and see movies that were three, four months old before they left the theater. Yeah, yeah. Did anything crazy happen? Do you have any fun stories? I mean, you know, I had maybe not when you were working, but working there, not as many okay crazy ish stories. Um, you know, really the the weirdest was dealing with that this drunk guy, you know, in your 16, you know, and you don't really, you know, like you don't really understand why they're being the way they're being because you've never oh, been why they're behaving that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like I've never you know, encountered a blackout true. before. But yeah, they, this guy was wandering through this movie theater and someone came and grabbed me because I was like the most authoritative person around, I guess, amongst no. all my peers. <laughs> I don't know. A little a little uh pale ginger kid, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, speaking of daywalkers. And he was like, I'm looking for my daughter. And I was like, What are you talking about? Is she is she in this movie theater? You know, I was trying to be like, Does she work here? You know, yeah. And he, he was trying to pick her up from daycare. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, he's in the wrong place. He like, no he... And then I had to like get the police like, involved. Yeah, in no, but here's a cup of coffee. So well, not a coffee at the theater, but like here's a giant coke <laughs> to give you some caffeine to sober yeah. up. No, he didn't get to drive away from the theater. He was no, he did not. He was taken. He was chauffeured. Yeah. Yeah. No, like you know, we we got into like crazy like shenanigans and stuff behind the theater yeah, yeah. as right employees. On. But that was that was about the craziest thing. More I got I got wilder when we went to theaters as an adult and stuff. But you never worked at one. I'm shocked you never worked at a movie theater. I know you would think. No, yeah. I don't have that on my resume. But no, I you, like you did Blockbuster and you did some other and my first one was at Media Play, which was kind of like uh, Best Media Buy. Play. It was multi. Okay. It was a multimedia mm -hmm. sort of multimedia superstore, and it was basically mm -hmm. just broken into four uh, sections. And it was music and books and video games and software a little bit, but mostly video games and then movies. And so it was one of the few places that would hire sixteen-year-olds. And so I, um, the other place was Chick-fil-A, which they finally have out here. But it's a big thing in the South is Chick-fil-A. Mm -hmm. And so um, I had applied to both. And I didn't hear back from Media Play, but I did from Chick-fil-A. So, so I was doing the training when I heard back from Media Play. And I went in for an interview. And they are like, what section do you think would be right? And before they could even finish the sentence, it was like, movies, <laughs> movies. 
I'm going to be in the movie section because I was like just turned 16 or something. But it was movies, put me, put me in the movie section. And they were like, okay, okay. So they offered me the job and I was like, fuck yes. So that was the first one. And then um, the next one, I left that to go to a blockbuster, which was right down the street from my neighborhood. So it ended up just being, you know, and then I worked at other, there was movie gallery and um, other, there are other things, but yeah, always. I always wanted to work at blockbuster. And then when I finally did, it was right when they were shutting down and I lived in Dallas growing up. Mm -hmm. which is where their headquarters were and stuff. So I got to see firsthand the whole company falling apart from inside out. It is terrible. Oh, that sucks. I haven't watched the documentary yet. It's on my list. Is there a documentary about it coming? The last block. It's called the last blockbuster. Oh, okay. That one. Okay. It's going out here and it's out in Bend. I've driven past it. I haven't, we didn't go inside. It was too painful. (laughs) I miss it, man. Blockbuster. Hallowed ground. Hallowed ground. So many memories being in a blockbuster as a child, man. Oh, yeah. It just, it was like a place that we ran into like neighbors and stuff on the weekends while you were picking up your stuff. And I don't know. I felt like, you know, wandering through there for 30 minutes was more, uh, it was better time spent than scrolling 30 minutes to an hour on these, you know, download apps and stuff like that and trying sure. to find something. Like, I don't know. You were just like in Back another, in my all, day. Those, all those covers being there and it just, ah. Uh, yeah, I miss those days. I do, man. I have fond memories. No, no, I'm with you. But what about the theater? Um, did, you said when you were an adult, you got into shena- shenanigans. What sort of theater shenanigans did you get into? I like I like theater shenanigans. I got a few myself. Uh, I mean, not that we're disrespectful people nah. in the audience by any means. You know, we were never the guys that like brought laser pointers or something like that. Or like the recent thing. I don't know if you saw that the YouTube guys that were trying to make like a, some like hip hop reel in the middle of uh, the middle of a movie. They like went down there and started recording. Like that's getting obnoxious and stuff. We oh. like to get messed up while watching. <laughs> yeah. How do I a lot of people. Politely, yeah. so. like, we like to get fucked up and go see movies. It's fun. We, we did. We yeah, really yeah. did. No, it's um, fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like going to it's, it's like going to roller coaster roller coasters and you know getting fucked up. It's fun. So yeah. movies too. You know it's yeah. just fun. So it, I think it, it was Boondock Saints too. We went to go see, and we took like a huge like uh, cattlecade of people. We took up like two whole rows ourselves with the amount of people. Oh, nice. To go and yeah, check that's us a out. thinking that's Boondock great. Saints too was going to be a great movie. Um, Wait, this is the second one you said? Yeah, the second one, not not the first one. Because the first one, we that got a re-release of theaters, and I got a crazier story about that one that we almost got arrested that night too. Um, nice. But this this one, I had a friend that uh, decided to wear a big old trench coat with a bunch of pockets, and he was just sneaking in beers from our thirty packs that were in the yes, party. and he just kept going in and out of the theater. Nice back in, and then uh, his younger brother had a uh, bottle of whiskey with him. And nice. so we were taking little like, you know, snips of that and stuff while we were watching the whole movie. Sure. I mean, and the whole audience was it was a perfect audience because lo- everybody there. They was loved it. Fan. Yeah. And stuff that's, like that. so it's great to be in an audience like that. Audience. Sure. So and you're into it, in. too. So yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so, totally. Well, it's just, like watching a sporting event or anything like who says yeah. you can't drink while so you're doing talk. this. What are you fucking talking about? Like, this is a communal. We go to the theater because part of the energy is the yeah, community, no, right? like the well, best experience yeah. are when you're in a room full of people and you're mm-hmm. all watching the same movie and the movie is fucking awesome. And you all are sitting there thinking, man, this movie is great. I'm so glad I'm here and everyone's into it. That's it's, why I miss going to see comedies in the movie theater. Laughing sure. With the yeah. yeah. Crowd, people like that. Comedies like, are good in the theater. Yeah, absolutely. Liar, liar is not the greatest comedy of all time. Nah. But, the but it was a great experience that audience for the first time was so fun yeah but I yeah uh i just remember okay so you were getting fucked up yeah yeah i just nice. remember leaving but thankfully we we stayed low key but that dude was in and out all night with the, nice. the beers and that's that was fun did and it help all, the all movie at all the clanging of the beer cans on the ground while we were shuffling out because i mean we went through probably two 30 packs while we were up there and just uh i feel so bad for whoever we left that trash for no um yeah no right like poor whatever they're used to it you worked you're like whatever i'm used you know i had to do it too. suck it up yeah whatever it's it's trash it's really not that hard to throw it away like come on 
Like it's that fine. was the same movie theater though that yeah I used to work at. That was nice. years later. I mean, that was the theater. I mean, I lived in that neighborhood forever, so that was the, our theater forever. Yeah, even yeah. after I quit working there, um, sure. it was great. I always got to see my boss, uh, old boss, Mr. Bailey. He worked there mm-hmm. forever, and I he was always checking up on me. Nicest guy, dude. I miss that. It was a great first job experience. Let me tell you, man, working in the movie great. theater, getting to see the free movies. Mm-hmm. and stuff like that oh yeah and just being like oh i can go see, see rated r movies when i'm 16 because my friend's selling me the ticket like that was a fun feeling as well so oh right on yeah yeah i remember one time uh so i, I was back in atlanta and being a friend we were gonna smoke a little bit before we went and see uh went and saw baz Luhrmann's australia and so we were actually living right behind. Okay, so you don't know anything about Atlanta, but in North Atlanta, there's a ritzy part of town called Buckhead. And there are two, like, really ritzy um, uh, malls, like, catacorner to each other. And they're two different kinds of malls, but still, like, you're in the rich part of town. There's, like, two malls across from each other. Sort of thing, like, that's where we're at. And, like, okay. So, but one of the malls has a movie theater, and we were living at a house. It was pretty much like Animal House, if you've ever seen that. Like, of course. It was pretty yeah. much, except my room was the one, like, um, the president in Animal House who has the clean room up top of the bathroom and he's getting ready on his own. Like that was totally my room or tried to be anyway. I tried to be, I tried to make it more Last like that. It was just, <laughs> it was a mess, but like my room was yeah. clean. Um, and I had my own bathroom, but anyway, we were, we could walk to the theater cause we were like just past some trees on the other side and it was a dead end and no one knew the house was back there, but we were right behind Phipps Plaza and there's a theater. So it was like, um, and I was in production school and we were all in college sort of thing. Like we were in our older twenties, but most of me and my friends, we had prolonged, you know, college experiences (laughs) in one form or another. And so me and my friend, um, uh, who I won't name, I guess I'm not supposed to do that, but, uh, don't name names. <laughs> Don't name names, right? Um, so anyway, it was like we were gonna we were gonna smoke a little bit and then go catch Baz Luhrmann's new movie, Australia, because I love Milan Rouge. So you know, that was I didn't his know nice Baz movie. Luhrmann did Australia. I've never seen Australia. Oh, okay. so. Yeah, you oh. mentioned that last time when we talked about Milan Rouge. So um, anyway, we got a little stoned and um, and of course, because I was a little stoned, like I went back to my room to like drop the stuff off because we didn't even have to drive. We could just walk. And so it was like, cool. Um, nice. so we didn't even have to like drive and then smoke in the car and then go in. We could just walk. So, uh, I went back to my room, grabbed keys, whatever that sort of thing. But what I forgot to do was take the bowl out of my camo, my, not camo, but my, um, uh, cargo. Oh my God. Thank you. Cargo. Yeah, my cargo shorts. And I had it on the side pocket. And so we yeah. go, we go to the theater, blah, blah, blah. We sit down. We're in the middle. We're night, you know, we're stoned. I'm going to see a movie by a filmmaker I enjoy. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm in, you know, I'm in my spot. And we're sitting there and we're trailers. And I go to like, you know, put one leg over the other and cross it. And, and the trailer ends, or it was in between trailers or like right before the movie started. But anyway, all I hear is, Oh no! Oh, and no, everyone no. instantly knew what it was, <laughs> and me and my friend are sitting there, and I bet they could smell it. <laughs> yeah, and it was an old bowl that I had for a long time, and I didn't clean it in a long time, and so it just had that resin reek, and it started <laughs> to spread, and it was so You're strong, you know and a guy well. like. Two or three seats down, like reaches down and picks up a big chunk of glass at his feet and like leans over and hands me half of my bowl or whatever, which was so embarrassing. And he just got up and like went to the aisle and went back like three or four aisles and came back and sat down just to get away from the smell. And we just sat there. It was almost perfect. It was like, no, we just got to sit here in this, like yeah, yeah. getting up and fling, like the honorable thing to do is just to sit here and, you know, sit, you know what I mean? Like sleep and sleep yeah. in the bed that we made. And yes. we just sat there and it eventually, but, Oh God, it was so embarrassing too. That like everyone really knew, like there was no, oh, so that man. was a funny one. Oh God. That was so Dang. embarrassing. It was brilliant. Uh, I miss, I do miss going to the theater. I love it. It's you're right. It is like going back to Mecca, if you will, you know, it's where I grew up. It's where my family used to come together and hang out. You know, Mm -hmm. that was what we did on the weekends. Mm -hmm. I just I sort of miss it. I sort of I also miss kind of going to the smaller theaters back in the day. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, now they're all huge and, you know, auditorium 
you know, seating and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I remember going to like the smaller ones and they would just be jam packed because there was only eight screens in them or whatever on a Friday night. You couldn't yeah. see. You had to like look around the person in front of you because there was no stadium seating. And it's yeah. Yeah. But it had its own charm as being able to <laughs> No, man. I, I, there's something to it. Yeah. I remember when the, they even started changing the movie theater style and like there was one we went to that was like a rocking chair. So if you sat up towards the front, it was angled at a way so that you didn't crane your neck. And if you sat in the middle, oh, like that, hell yeah, weren't in your way. And then if you were towards the back, you were above all the people in the middle. And that was before stadium seating and stuff. And we used to oh, love that's a good going to that. Yeah, that's a great idea. I'm it all about that. That's a that's a uh, I wonder why that didn't catch on. Maybe it was a structural thing. It's too I don't expensive know. for yeah. maybe ex- structurally expensive. Or, Once you the know. stadium thing started happening, that became the new norm. And that's what I mean. Yeah, I that's the way to that man go and see like the the amazing or not the amazing but the original like toby mcguire spider-man spider-man one, yeah Rainy, when that yeah. came out and we went to the stadium seating the one that i'm talking about that had 1300 mm-hmm. people in that whoo i'm gonna tell you when that dude showed up on screen and the spider-man thing for the first mm-hmm. time and like everybody was like cheering and stuff that's also a, a beautiful moment too you know just like mm-hmm. to be in a crowd that's just loving what's happening and you're all there because you love cinema and you know just complete strangers, like, and you're, it feels like you become friends for like two hours. And like, you know, your, your group of friends grows. Ooh, shared. Yeah. Yeah. That whole audience for like that moment, you know, that yeah, you're yeah. all sharing together. It's fun. I do miss it, man. Seeing the Matrix in the theater for the first time. Whoo. Damn. That really stood out, you know? Yeah. That's a big one for me, too. Yeah. Um, we, I was actually working at Media Play. It was my first job. And I had already, uh, I remember, um, Sing Johnny Mnemonic in the theater with Keanu, <laughs> yeah. his first his first attempt at the major, you know, <laughs> a sort of cere- cerebral sci fi, yeah. and that one's kind of a st- not steampunk. Yeah. Um, what's, what's I know uh, you don't play video games, but you know he stars in this I'm new video about. game because mm-hmm. of his tie to all those kind of like sci fi oh, okay. films. Oh my god! So it sucked, and so really, when uh, I'm sorry, like I that movie is just it's it's just not I, good. You know. Um, it's been- far too long since i've seen it it's playing on one of our things i know i've been passing by it is it worth a rewatch just for nostalgia i doubt it i haven't seen it since the theater okay. and we ended up like throwing a hacky sack across the theater from each other because we were the only two people there in the theater and it was so yeah. bad oh, yeah, that we ended up just being like you know someone had a hacky sack because it was the 90s and so we just and so we just started throwing but i played baseball so like i didn't care about using my feet but i could throw that mother you know like i can throw and catch really well so um that's what's funny I'm like we'll just throw it across the theater we got <laughs> we got a big ass room um let's do that so but anyway when some a friend of mine i hadn't seen the trailer because the internet wasn't as much of a thing so if you didn't see the trailer on tv you almost didn't see the trailer you know what i mean like you might see oh, yeah. a poster for it somewhere but you and really trailers well, you gave away at the movie theater to just, see, exactly you had to see it at the trailers. theater yeah. exactly so i had not seen trailers. a trailer for it trailers all i knew was keanu was doing like a sci-fi thing again and in my mind at that time it was like Dude, did you see Johnny Mnemonic? Yikes. Like, I can't do that to myself. I can't do that to myself again. You know, I'm not hating on anybody. It's fine. I'm not saying they shouldn't do this, but like, I don't need to, I, I did that, but you know, shame on me if I, you know, do it, do it to me once, shame on you, do it to me twice, shame on me, sort of thing. You so, got it. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wasn't going to do that. Um, and he was like, no, 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 this, I think this is cool. And so one Friday night, it was that opening Friday. And so he had, uh, he got off work at like seven or whatever at media play i think i had moved on to blockbuster at that time i must have had because that was 1999 so i was already at blockbuster so i probably like after school you know i went and we met at media play he got off work we went to the theater and holy shit seeing that in a packed house on a friday night was absolutely amazing because every single person in that theater was absolutely floored from start to finish because no one had seen anything like that anything like it before and we were all sitting there going like whoa what is whoa what is whoa what is yeah and then by the end of it we were all just shell-shocked because it was so bonkers and so crazy but so cool and you know slick and the soundtrack kicked ass 
fast, but it was dark and you know all that yeah. shit. It and was I awesome. Loved, I love all the. Oh, films be quiet! Also my dog like, is. <laughs> I apologize for my dog if anyone hears floor it. Floor and stuff like that, like that. Thirteenth floor, yeah. Jude Law. Yeah. And yeah, but yeah, I'm gonna no, let my I, dog in. Keep this, talking. Man. My my, you know, my family. We used to definitely roll out to the theater like on the regular. I miss all those days. Uh, speaking of nostalgia, man, did you uh, happen to uh, see that they're uh, on location filming the new Ghostbusters? No, but wasn't there something in the news about that recently? Yeah, man, they they're like at the old firehouse uh, right now, uh, setting up shop. It's pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. Yes, I was gonna say like, okay, so um, one of the i when I was thinking about ideas this week, one of the ideas is. Um, mm. or for an episode later is like feel goods. Like what's your favorite feel goods? It's not yeah, about, you know, anything, but because it's about your experience with it, which is what we would talk hey, about. But like, about this, why man? do you, why does this give you the feels? And actually Ghostbusters is probably on my list of right. like feel good movies. It's almost like comfort food. Like um, what's your rainy day? What's your rainy day thing? Like if there, if it's storming outside, you can't go outside and play and you're just going to sit down and movie binge. What are the movies that you're stacking up? Tolkien 12. Yeah. I could do the that. Three, doing hey, the three extended. You guys are listening to start telling us your picks and maybe we'll feature it on the next yeah, episode. Yeah. Tolkien and 12 is, is, is up there. Or I'll pick a director and do a director day. You know what I mean? That sort of thing. But really, Tolkien 12 is the first time we did that, me and my friends, mm -hmm. what we call the Tolkien 12, which is the three, for anyone out there who doesn't know, that's the three extended edition Lord of the Rings movies because Ooh. all told, back to back to back, it is like a hair's breadth from 12 hours total. Mm -hmm. And so I think it was MLK Day O... Yes. Four or oh five, wow. and yeah. everyone, most of the people were either, you know, like we were in college, that sort of thing to various degrees, and no one had school that day. But I kind of feel like it was an unexpected day off, sort of thing. And I didn't have work, and so we were like, hey, let's do something. Ooh, let's do all three extended editions back to back to back. And that first time we tried it, we would try to take breaks in between. And like people would go and come and it would slow the thing down. And so we quickly realized like, OK, if we're going to do this rule, number one, Frodo does not stop walking like that fellowship is going to fucking take that ring is going to Mount Doom, whether you're here or not. If you want to take a nap, if you want to nod off and wake up that the, the, the journey will be continuing without you because it is 12 hours, whether we break or not. So it was one of those like that's one of the rules like. When the disc ends, the person nearest the player puts in the next disc, and the movie keeps going. That's and incredible. The Tolkien I do Twelve it different than that, but that okay. What do you like do? Commitment. What do you do on a rainy day? What's your thing? Oh, oh, we're just diving into that. Oh no, I meant for the Lord of the Rings that we do. Our, oh, what you? Yeah, yeah. What's your? Oh, okay. But what's your? Uh, what's your Lord of the Rings thing? Oh yeah, we do it like a mini series, you know, with the extended cuts. So we do it over a period of a week. So that way we don't oh, have one sitting no. like no. <laughs> no, <says>. no. <laughs> we that is mild cheddar, sir. Oh man, no, that's how <laughs> that's the only way the wife and I can do that. No, man. I get it. Sure. Mine is a commitment. It's an endurance test. That's it's part of it. It's like you're going well, and it's part of it is you're going on the journey with yeah. fucking Frodo. Yeah. Like you're tired. You're tired of this. What do you think fucking Fro what do yeah. you think Frodo's going through? You think Sam wants to take a nap? Yeah, he does. So if he's probably taking a nap right now, so you can take a nap, but they're we're doing this. <laughs> I love the Tolkien it. Twelve. I love it. It's yeah, a thing. Yeah. Like you got it. You you get your things, or you come and go. Like sometimes, like you know what? I'm gonna miss a reel, or you would talk, like in a movie. It's like I'm gonna miss a reel or two, but that's okay. That yeah. ring still just one step at a time going to Mount Doom, man. It's not you know because even the story takes place over a year. Yeah, the Lord of the Rings takes place over uh, a whole year. It takes a long time to get the fight, and they take breaks and shit. Lord of the Rings. I, that's so, what I also love is when we just start talking about. I want to see. Have you heard about the restoration? Um, so what I want to awesome. see, I'm curious because I've seen the extended cuts so many times. You know what I would call like yeah. the original prints. You know what I mean? Like so many times. So that's always going to be my like. You're going to restore them though. 
No, no. What happened is when Pete Jackson I, did you see his World War One documentary where they were restored uh, the footage from World War One? It's amazing what they can do. Okay. Um, but anyway, so it was kind of a test bed, and he just used it to restore, you know, Weta and Weta Digital. They were creating tools for mm -hmm. essentially restoration, and so the oh, first cool. like product that they used to showcase these tools was a World War One documentary. So they took old. Okay. footage That's um, cool, and Brian restored Jackson. it and played it and it plays back at the appropriate frame rate so people aren't moving too fast and jittery like an old newsreel footage and stuff like that so they look you know human and they colorized it and they just cleaned it all up and so to watch it, it it's like oh my god it doesn't look perfect of course but it looks you know comparatively just like, it doesn't look like it was shot yesterday. It just looks like it was perfectly shot for its time. You know what I mean? So it's just uh, beautifully restored. So when they were doing that, they also, they were doing the 4K. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. The We Shall Not Grow Old. There's a cool, watch wow. watch this about it. Wow. It's, it's pretty incredible. That is pretty cool looking. It's a great, I saw okay. that in the theater. So he, anyway, it's an well, incredible. At, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, look at that transformation right there. Yeah, no, that's yeah. Amazing. It'll show in that wow. making of thing. It'll show like a before and after. It's pretty incredible. So as part of that, they were doing the 4K mm -hmm. Blu-rays for Lord of the Rings, and the thing is, is you know, they own all that like stuff. They have the film reels. You know what I mean? Like it's right, in the right. archives there in New Zealand. So they went back. I think they redigitized the whole thing. You know, with like you know, an 8K whatever, you know, scanner and also updated the effects for the Lord of the Rings. So some were improved along the way because theoretically they would just have to scale up the effects that they made for the movie at the time because they don't master it in 4K. Even if they shoot something in 4K, it's mastered mm. in 2K, which is really 1080p. Things are mastered in 1080p. So... Because 4K is four times that amount. So if you're doing digital right. stuff, that's four times as many pixels. That's four times as much information you have to create and manipulate and all that shit. So they're mastered in like what they call 2K, um, which is like 2096 by 1080. But it is 1080. Um, so what they did is in mastering, they wanted the effects like Lord of the Rings at that time to be in 4K. So to do that, they took the original effects. And in a lot of cases, they improved them. So like the Balrog just looks better that's it, awesome they like and with a where, modern where they just use the modern exists? tools it's it's, on these the, are the blu-rays these are the 4k blu-rays yeah oh, okay. i haven't watched them yet i haven't watched them yet i just know they exist okay so my, and they have updated mean, footage and everything collection is now out of out of date technically technically okay <laughs> but i still have my dvds my still my dvds for those for the extended editions yeah. which i have like over here those are those are yeah, right over there actually um those yeah, right over here, next to the rest of my Tolkien knowledge, uh, oh. my libra my library. You like some I Tolkien? Look. I do. Um, Middle Earth is uh, one of those. Oh, okay. Here's a question. I want. Ah, I'm so glad I remembered this. So we can end on this. Is probably the last thing we can end on. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, listen on this. So uh, I started rewatching. So I saw Avatar Way of Water in the theater. Now, I, I get Cameron. I like James Cameron, but I can watch his movies through the appropriate perspective. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I can enjoy it, but not take it to, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So when I went and saw the new Avatar, I was like, cool, let's see what you're doing. And I, I enjoyed it. I did. Um, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. the, it, my expectations were in the right place. So I got what I wanted out of it. You know what I mean? And nothing is misplaced. So, um, but my wife hadn't seen it yet. So now that it's on Disney, we were going to yeah. watch it. And we, we figured we were going to have to do it in stages just because, you know, it's so fucking long. It and is, after the right? kids and everything, it's like, no, no, we'll half this or maybe in three, you know, in three sections, depending. So we started watching it and it occurred to me one of the things that I had read recently in one of the discussions with this was that, you know, the original movie came out 12 years ago and yeah, it broke yeah. every box office record because everyone in the fucking world went and saw it because it's designed that way. It's designed to appeal to theoretically mm -hmm. a, the largest audience possible in a global point of view. So, which is anyway, <laughs> which is a different rabbit hole we can go into. Um, but seeing the movie, it's interesting that I, I've, you know, I've watched a lot of the behind the scenes stuff of Avatar, which I think is really interesting because I can nerd out about it, but they spent a lot of time world building. Mm -hmm. And yet one of the critiques is that, 
you know, like it never Avatar made a lot of money, but it didn't impact like the cultural zeitgeist at all. Like it barely no. moved the needle. No one dressed up as Navi for Christmas. You know what I mean? I mean, Halloween. Why did I say or Christmas? Halloween. Anyway, yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Mother. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Halloween. So like it just didn't it's not like, like, how, like Star Wars has left like legacy at all or even and Marvel recently. You know what I mean? To yeah. For good or ill, like it, no, kids it was were dressing up as. But it that's why I'm shocked they even it never bled. So which yeah. is so which is so interesting to me because I know how much effort is being put into a lot, you know what I mean? A lot of things, but no one's like you know, I spent a lot of time learning about Middle Earth, which is a built world. It's not real. And yet I've spent a lot of time studying it. And yet <laughs> like, I don't know anyone, I don't know anyone who's been like, dude, I was fucking down a Pandora wormhole. <laughs> The past week, man, I was just devouring maps and lore yeah. and all that stuff. Like Pandora is my fucking jam. Like, do you know about this ecosystem that they created for this thing? It's so wild. You know what I mean? But that should be, you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of designed with the purpose of being that way. And yeah. it's totally not. The box and office Disney's doesn't reflect trying, that. Though. They're milking and it. And they've got like Pandora World at, yeah, like, at Disney World. Trying and I'm sure it's really a hard. little bit of a thing but you're trying really hard and just no one like cool yeah. movie but no one cares and i just wonder yeah. why is that and because yet it's still marvel. like what because of marvel because marvel showed that you could show a cinematic universe so everyone wants one now like that's why Paramount no 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 that's not what i mean that's not what i mean oh, I thought um that's what you're no what i meant is why don't as a phenomenon why didn't it catch on beyond a box office phenomenon which it clearly is beyond a box like office phenomenon why doesn't like, like everyone saw it but no one really gives a shit and they go that looks cool yeah. but like eh. i don't know everyone man. just kind of says it looks I, cool I but eh. it was a movie for children i think children resonate more with that stuff like star wars right that's when they had the action figures and the merchandising like because it was i don't think anyone clearly for kids kid was like can i get a navi for christmas yeah I'm, I <laughs> that's what I meant. Get a Navi for Christmas. Dress as one for Halloween. Yeah, that's, what go, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's what I meant. That's what I meant. There was no Tickle Me Navi that year, you know? Well, no, they tried. They, I'm sure they made them. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, that's the thing is they tried yeah. to sell them, and they all got unsold. That was the, like, I mean, for me, don't get me wrong. Like, I was never, you know, a fan of those movies. We went and saw it in the theater. We had the experience. I didn't enjoy the first Avatar in most people don't. any a way, people shape, don't. or form. I was like, cool, a lot of CG. All right. Yeah, lots. Like, that's really all, all I saw in that thing was just a yeah. lot of CG. But, see, but a lot of people look at Marvel. But see, that's the thing is, but you look at Marvel and you say, that's a lot of CG. But you, as the audience, or, not me necessarily, but the, <laughs> theoretically, yeah. you as an audience member who likes a Marvel movie, you empathize with the character and what situation. Well, I also, you know what I mean? Which draws you into it beyond the CG. So you're not, you're looking beyond the CG. The problem with the, the Navi and stuff is you can't look beyond the CG no matter how, so, like. I know we don't normally go down the Marvel thing, but I actually wasn't a huge, like, I was a skeptic of Marvel. It really, like, Iron Man was amazing, but then they didn't really do anything great with it. Until Winter the Soldier one. was yours. You like what? Winter Soldier, right? Winter Soldier is your favorite, right? Oh, You've yeah. Winter Soldier, dude. That was the movie that I was like, oh, they're doing something now with this. Okay. The action scenes in Winter Soldier are amazing. I have so much fun rewatching that as a spy thriller action movie, hmm. not as a Marvel movie. And that's what I that's what I was about to get at. When they made The Avengers, he wanted to make a great escape movie. So it's it's a war movie where you're like gathering your troops and then they mm -hmm. don't get along and stuff. And it, he mm -hmm. created sure. a team that wasn't a Marvel movie. And they were all they did was rescan it with Marvel characters. And I yeah. started really seeing that. And that was their whole thing through that phase. And that's why those movies knocked it out of the park. Mm -hmm. But like, I, you know, I just like that Marvel stuck the landing. You know, Endgame was amazing. So it made it worthwhile for all those other like hit or misses that they had throughout the years and stuff like that. But like Iron Man two and three aren't my jam necessarily. Like there's a lot of ones in there that mm. I don't get down on and stuff. I, I know saw... we don't go down this rabbit hole, but like I said, like when they started doing genres and stuff, that's why I really like that Spider-Man movie. The first one where it was like a John Hughes film, but a Spider-Man uh, mm -hmm. and stuff. And I was like, I'm really digging the vibe that they had in that. Yeah. Movie. Yeah. I know what you mean. Sure. Um, and, Michael Keaton was the shit as the vulture. So 
Uh, he's in the new Flash one, right? Isn't he resurrecting? Yeah, he's back as Batman in that one. Yeah, everybody's yeah. saying pretty good things about that. I'm gonna wait and see. I'm, uh, you know, DC's not fair been enough. my thing, so. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, well, this summer I am looking forward still to seeing a couple of movies. Uh, but I'm, I keep I keep checking Barbie. like my phone, like what's coming out this Friday? What's coming out this Friday? Yeah. So. I'm waiting. But, What's coming uh, out this yeah. Friday? What are you going to go I, see this Friday? I, I don't even know. I don't know. I have to check. It's yeah. it's it's Father's no, Day. Man. You're not going to go to the movie theater today with the kids? You should go. No, see not today. Movie. No, we're going to go fishing today. Fishing. Um, there's a little. No, there's a. Uh, yeah, it's, fishing isn't my. Uh, I'm actually a fire tender. That's my like. Because I'm a storyteller, so I'm the person like you guys go fish. I'm going to sit here around the fire. I will tend the fire. This fire's not yeah. going out. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to chop it up with everyone around the fire. That's where I belong sort of thing. Like, you guys go fish. But there's a place, like, it's um, a farm, and you can go, and there's different pools. And so it's for little kids who can kind of just go and put their rod in, and they're going to catch something because, like, it's a barrel full of fish essentially in the ground. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, they can't not catch something. <laughs> so it's more about the kids than any, like, sort of fishing, adv- uh, you just know, hunting adventure. Adventure. adventure yeah yeah it's just more of like hey let's go because we'll eat the because well, i fun. love try i i love trout so like i'll eat the shit out of it nice yeah well, so anyway that's, that's what we're doing but thank time. you very much i will try to watch a movie either tonight i'm gonna finish watching avatar or there was something else that i really wanted to see yeah recently. I don't what was it know. oh i want to watch athema um or athena athena look it up a t h e n a it's supposed to be bonkers visually. Um, so anyway, it's like an urban, On urban Netflix. unrest, urban okay. unrest, I do uh, which have you Netflix. love. Vi- you gangs, gangs, urban unrest. You love okay. the Warriors, man. Here we go. This can this can kickstart some ideas for the Warriors for you. It seems right. I haven't watched this yet, but I watched the trailer and it was like, oh, cool. But anyway, what I've read is that it is just a tour de force visually. Um, and so sometime I'm going to watch that soon, but it's like 90 on minutes Netflix. of just, you know, yeah, it's yeah. one of those like 90 minute movies of yeah. it starts and then it doesn't stop until it's over. Then I might have cool. to check that which out. I'm, we'll which I'm in. That. I dig that. We'll, Let's do that. Up. Let's do yeah. that. Okay. We'll but also I'm going to try to find something else to watch too. Like pick up. I finally need to watch Moonlight. I think it won best picture. That's, that's Never been on my that list for a while. I need to watch Moonlight. Yeah. So I'll do that this week. Go to the theater. Cool. Go to the theater. I will try. I will try. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Yeah, thank, thank you. you Happy that's listening. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll be back next week with another episode of Back to the Podcast. Uh, let us know your fondest movie theater experience as well in the comments below. And I guess, you know, maybe next week we'll talk about, uh, you know, rainy day movie marathons and stuff uh, like that. Double feature, so, the art of the double feature. Yeah, or the art of the double feature. There you go. So Which can kind of, it can be a hybrid, you know. Are great double features and work yeah. back to back. And we'll yeah, see yeah. if we can do them next week on Let's do that podcast. If you did enjoy what you heard, tune in every week for more. Be sure to hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to get involved and join the conversation in our Back to the Podcast Facebook group. All of our links are down below and join us for more fun each week as Justin and I continue to just discuss everything about movies that we love. So thanks again. We'll see you the next time.